Why are you up? Because I got some important shit going on here. What do you think? Boom, the world class. Hi, Noble. <laughs> what's up? What's up? Hey. How are you? How's everybody tonight? Fantastic. Yay. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Thanos. All right. What's going on, Jenny? Hey, welcome to the world class. I am Noble Miguel Mario, Tunica Bay, Morsh America, Mosque, consecrated and appointed missionary, Morsh Science Temple of America. We have our lovely host of this evening, the lovely, infamous Lexi Maxwell. Hi, everybody. What's going on? How are you? How are you doing? How was your week? That was how we got the jokes. He said, uh, Lexi Dawson this week. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure y'all hit the like button on the way in. Um, share this out. You know, this is adult time. You know what I'm saying? My son is literally asleep. He, just, he don't want to sleep nowhere in the house unless he's next to me. Huh? Uh -uh. So that's where we at right now. Um, we have the lovely Jenny Morena. Yes. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Mamacita Linda. We have my guy, Thanos That's Theory. Joy Z in the house. <laughs> the luckiest man on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we got my guy Zone. Shout out to Coach Yang. Another Jersey, another Jersey fellow. You know, he in Arizona too. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's on with the jokes. Because he always he always got the jokes. Yeah, so um, you say yes, sir. <laughs> you say hi to Savannah, even though she's behind the scenes. Yeah, you know we I had to you know I got both of them. I'm starting representing y'all. Start representing the team. You know, the team of three over here in the world class. <laughs> um, shout out to Savannah. Um, she's busy this evening, so we always gonna send her love. She does. She's the best. She's been holding us down. Absolutely. Are these thumbnails that you've seen these last um, episode three, two, and one? Savannah created it. Um, she been doing so much, um, so much behind the scenes, uh, helping yeah. me to make decisions. Um, just stuff behind the scenes, bro. She she's been she's been fired, so you know she she ain't gonna be able to make it tonight, but. Um, yeah, if we may have a special guest. We have a few special guests that may come up tonight. Yeah, but um, everyone come up. It's Saturday night, and the feeling's right. <laughs> right. So, so okay. So you got to, all right. So you have to say this. But what is it? all I mean? Tesoro, tesoros. Yeah, tesoros are treasures. Hello, my treasures. Oh, okay. Jenny is just the most sweetest. Like I know, I know. Right. our language is the best. It's so romantic. Tesoro, that's what your mom calls you. Meet Tesoro, so you grow up with your mom telling you, "My little treasure, get over oh. here, my little treasure." So that's very tender. That's like a right. very tender term of endearment. I, I receive it in the name of Kevin Samuels. I would say, so okay, so what we have tonight? Um, you see the title. Uh, you know, this is episode three, but you see it like right up under us. Again, that's, that's work by the lovely uh, Savannah that's like right here. That's so cool. She put the little collar there too. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, she got the collar. So we have, um, the main topic is collar and cer uh, cer ceremony. Can't talk to yes. that. And um, definitely going to get into that experience because I know I never even thought that it would be a collar ceremony. I think that's awesome. And I'm, I'm completely interested. I've been... Since you uh, told, told me what the topic was, I'm like, I definitely want to hear what this is about. Um, sounds interesting. Um, again, guys, if you watch on the replay, hit the like. Please comment whether you like it, whether you don't like it. You can timestamp it, all the things you guys be doing. Um, and your views on some of the things we're saying is, is that we're going to say in this live, that we have said in this live, in the previous lives. Let us know where you at. You know, is it your first time seeing this these, this series? I don't know how, how many we'll do, but you know, it's fun. You know, this is a this is a this is a doubt night. This is a doubt conversation. Got a lot. 
a lot of stuff that we talk about and um i think i'd like to say i appreciate you for one doing the show let alone three of them um being on the team um i talk about savannah but lexi is just top shelf you know top shelf in terms of her communication her mindset um contrary to other people's belief her loyalty and um you know i i, I appreciate you just just wanted to be able to just say that to you off top um appreciate you having having you on the show and having you on this channel and um because you you bring conversation that i've been kind of hemming and hard to get around like uh, i don't know how i'm started i probably gonna do some videos and it probably got what well, i got pushed back to the other videos i gotta do I got like 80 videos to do um so <laughs> look at thanos <laughs> thanos is hilarious Free luck, free luck. Facts. <laughs> what like i said make sure you moisturize before you put the color on that's what you heard where did you hear that from yeah right thanos thanos is a thanos is gonna want to have a coloring ceremony after this episode Facts. and uh yeah so let's get into it um because well, like I said, you you, you, you brought words. No, well, thank you for your generous words. You you know, oh, I appreciate boy. you. So to be uh to be kind of uh acknowledged by you is is a wonderful thing in this space. So I wanna say thank you. I appreciate you. You're definitely welcome. And I am excited about tonight's topic, the coloring ceremony. Um, because for me, this is the best part of the whole thing. Because you've gone through the courtship. You've gone through the contract. The contract is now signed. So now you are you are owned as a submissive. You are property. You are under the protection of your master and you have a whole contract. Like it's just, you know exactly what to expect. You know what I mean? Like one day you have this level of uncertainty and the next day you just know everything. So, um, so now you prepare for your collaring ceremony. And it's it's kind of like getting engaged or marriage. You know, some people, the contract is like getting engaged and then the collaring is like getting married. To me, the collaring is mm. like everything. It's just everything. Um, that's for me where everything for me just is now like, it's like a wedding that it's about the woman. So now this is about the submissive and it's like, it's a big celebration because it's a beautiful thing to find like a true submissive who's obedient and loyal. And you're and as a master, you put so much effort. It's like now we're like 90 days out from the beginning of the courtship. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, a pro it's like, he's finally gonna probably have like intercourse with her, you know? He, he usually, you know, it depends, it depends on your master. Some masters have to be careful. Like I've mentioned before, some submissives, you can't get too physical with them too fast because it throws them off. But once you, once you collar, you know, it's, it's like a honeymoon. It's like a wedding. I just give it that level of commitment because you write vows. You write vows for one another. Mm -hmm. uh, that you share and it's a party. You invite people who are in the lifestyle. Um, if you have friends that are not in the lifestyle, but they know how you choose to live, you can invite them also. Um, and, uh, and it's a whole ceremony as a submissive, you are in full display probably before you're able to interact with people. You're up on a stage, um, maybe tied up completely, maybe completely, completely representing that you have a complete owner. So you could be like tied up you could be blindfolded like you're like people have never seen you like this before you can have a gag ball in your mouth you have like no sensation like oh my god like you're just on full display of ownership but like a piece of art your outfit is sick the whole thing is just sick um you might you know it, some some masters are very creative so they'll have like other subs around just on the stage like maybe serving my drink, like letting me take a sip because I might be blindfolded. Well, I have, that's what I like. So I've been blindfolded and I have someone there serving my drink. Uh, I like to have my sensation of my hearing played with so I won't be able to hear what's going on. 
So I can really feel the energy in the room. I, I like that feeling. Um, and then your master is working the room. He's just working the room, proud, showing off in a tuxedo, maybe with a cigar, maybe just like looking like boss, you know, right. you know, the music is the music. You know, it might be 20 to 50 people. It's not like a, it's not like I have 200 people there. It's maybe, maybe 50 people. Let's just say. So there's nice food, there's drinks, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a party like, um, where people get drunk because a lot of masters don't drink and they don't do drugs. They might have like a scotch or a nice glass of wine, but they don't drink. So the party is not centered around like, like what people think of a party, like getting drunk and getting crazy. Right, right. It's not like that. Um, and it, so I just, I don't want that to be the way it translates. There's like champagne and everybody's very well behaved. It's not like people are getting drunk on while there's music playing, people dancing. It's not like a BDSM party uh, to the max because you have maybe family and friends there that it would be too much. It's already too much to see them, for them to see you like this, you know? Yeah, I could, yeah. So, so it's like a balance of that, but it's not a drinking party. Um, so then, uh, there's, you know, the, the master is very creative. Most masters are very creative. That's why they're very successful because they mm -hmm. know how to, they just know how to create and build. So it sometimes it's like a cool production. I, my, my, my coloring ceremonies have been production and I've been to other ones that are like super cool production. So, um, then he might, you know, he might make an announcement for people to, you know, get ready to see, uh, the ceremony. And usually you'll have like an elder BDSM person that's kind of known in the community to come do this. And, uh, and then you're, you're, you're little, you're little by little exposed to what's to the people. So you're hearing things come for me, my hearing things come out, my blind phone comes out. So now I can see everybody there. I can hear them. Sometimes people start applauding, you know, it's very exciting. Um, and you feel that energy and then like, you're like, you're like uh, helped out of your your chase lounge, your sofa, whatever, and then they see your whole garb, your whole display of your outfit. Sometimes mm -hmm. the other subs will come to your feet to show that you do have some dominance, because you know it's still me, right? It's not like I'm not there. I'm still bratty and all that stuff. So I get to kind of be like, you know, I don't know. I get to be a little bit dominant in a minute for a little bit or something. Um, and then, uh, the person who's the elder comes, you say, you, you, you say some vows, uh, and then, uh, then the best part, you get to kneel before him, you know, you kiss your, his feet and he literally has a collar and puts it on you and he'll put a leash on it too. You'll say some words, everybody's excited. And then it's kind of like party time. I have a little bit of at ease time. Cause I could buy, I could mingle with people. I could, you know, dance. I could, uh, I have to ask for permission to drink and eat. Cause I, you know, I love sweets and all that stuff. So I have to ask for permission still, but I'm allowed to be like a little girl running around at a party. You know what I mean? You know, when you go to a big party, you see little kids just having fun. Right. Like, like you, you just love to see that. So I get to do that because my, my master wants to see me be a total little. If I'm going to be a little, this is the time. I'm not there like a, I don't even drink like that. I wouldn't, you know, I've drank there. I'll have a champagne, but I'm not like, let me get a margarita. I'm just like, so happy to be owned. So happy that I'm not lost. Um, that's, that's one of the greatest sentences ever. So happy to be owned. Thanos says, uh, my guy in Phoenix literally started teaching me about BDSM uh, game in 2020. Uh, when I went to visit, he said they take it very seriously. Wow, well, okay. you see, I had a feeling Thanos had a little bit of exposure. Um, yeah, it's very serious. It's very beautiful. Yeah. And, um, some, you know, some, some, some masters put on a really, like, a whole big serious scene where they, you know, depending who's there, but if it's just BDSM people, he'll whip the submissive. He'll do things to demonstrate that the submissive is is owned by him, you know? Um, I've seen those type of collarings that you 
you know, I know that I'm like, I'm about to see some stuff tonight, you know, not things that happen in my household, but things that people like. And it's like, oh my God, that's so crazy. And you, and you. But that helped reinforce your uh, hard limits and stuff, right? So yeah. Like, uh, I'm like, I'm, luck- yeah, I'm, like, I'm so lucky my master lets me have hard limits. I'm like, thank God that I have a, because, you know, some, some women don't and they don't want it. And, and, and they have, you know, they do everything. I don't know. Like, I think it's the most beautiful thing for a woman to really be able to just do everything. Like everything I mean, like she would lick his dirty feet. Like just, she just, she, you know, you could tell those, you could tell those subs. I could tell subs that I give them so much respect that I don't even, I don't even try to dominate them. I just try to learn from them. I just, sit back and I'm just in awe of how they move. Right. And it makes me want to be even better for mine, especially, hi Mandrell, especially um, to to have that inclination. Naturally, it's like if I was in, let's say I'm in a vanilla relationship, it, it works even there because it's like if I go to someone's dinner party and I see the way that she frosts a, a cake and it's her way is better than mine, so I'm gonna sit back and, and also observe how else she she moves in her dinner party. Mm-hmm. And maybe when I have another dinner party, I'll exercise the things that she did at hers. As women, I think, um, hi, Lucky Marie. What's hey. up, Lucky? What's yes. up, Marcus uh, Mandrelli? Hola, Marcus. Caballero Bello. Como esta, papito lindo? Marcus gets all that. <laughs> all that Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's like you, you, when you're around this, it's no different. Like when you're around a vanilla couple and they just have that energy that you could tell they love each other, that they, you know, like you see older couples like that. It doesn't mean they haven't been through stuff, noble, you know what I mean? But they just fully accept each other. They know the role that they played in their, you know, in life and that acknowledging those roles led to success, success monetarily, success spiritually with their own children and their legacy. Um, you know, and I, and, and for me, like, yes, I live based on the fundamentals of BDS and that's what I really love. Um, but I also think it applies to vanilla couples that you too. if, um, you know, and, and you know, like you could be vanilla and be a little kinky. That's fine. But you maybe don't want to be in the, in the lifestyle. You don't want people like me around. Do you want to keep it all, you know, right. on the level that you're comfortable? But the dynamic inside your household is that everybody understands like the dominant and submissive and, and, and that you're, you know, if it's that it's your lady that you really take the time to detail out what your expectations are and what you want. Like, don't expect people to read your mind, uh, to, yeah. know, to know what you need and yeah, how I, you might change, right? Whatever you need today, maybe right. tomorrow you need more, maybe you need less. Tell me. I want to know. I've actually said this this week. I, I want to hop on that point right there before you go to further into the um, into the ceremony because I, I got questions. I just wanted to make sure you let you rock first because people, you know, you get into something and people got all these questions. You forget your train of thought. I don't want to mess up your train of thought. But I, 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 that's like the biggest reason that I, I wanted to be into this because I'm not, I've never been like officially inducted into like the BDMS lifestyle. I met women that did it and they just, they just do what I tell them to do, whatever. But like I said, I think it was yesterday, we were talking poly, uh, polygamy and monogamy and stuff, right? So I was like, I said, you know, even was correcting the thought process on polygamy. I'm like, at the end of the day, it's not going to work if you don't have the foundational. I, just, I think you say the fundamentals of BDSM. It's just fundamentals of relationships, period. And every species, there's a hierarchy of who's dominant and who's submissive in every room. That is a fundamental thing. And our people, I don't think people understand that. So the young lady that was on the panel, she was like, I think her name was KB or KG. Um, she said, it's crazy you say that because she had, she knew a lady that was in BDSM and all her submissive, they had to ask them to eat. Same thing you just said. Uh, she, They had to ask her to eat, ask her for, for permission and things like that. So I'm saying, when the relationship and when that fundamental relationship is established, all the other, all the other things are handled. Like you don't have the problems you have with in monogamy because everybody knows their roles. In fact, it's more fundamental to have that done than to pick monogamy or polygamy because that's what make it work. 
it's not the other shit because most of these dudes don't understand when you're in a pol- monogamous relationship dude as a man you are the submissive right. that's the, that's just the foundation of the relationship she's controlling you she tell you what you can't do that's the only thing that exists with monogamy she's telling you what you can't do she's the dominant yeah because you know what happens in monogamy the man isn't able to express himself right so then he becomes emotional Right, because right. he has all this stuff bottled up inside him himself, right? Mm-hmm. But now, because he hasn't been able to exercise whatever his manhood is and however it is, right? Everybody's different. Because he has to adhere to what this woman is saying. So he's already doing something that's yes. unnatural. Unnatural because she's also expecting him to be a man. You better be a man, right? But he's not able to act like a man. Like at the animalistic level. You're not able to trust that no matter what he does outside of this household, he will always take care of you. Right. He'll take care of everything. Why do you care about what he does outside? Why? Why are you missing? What is it you're missing? Oh, because you want to control. Now, that's the word. And you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to... Sur- Hi, Jay Ali. Hi, beautiful. Um, you're not supposed to have that control over him. Mm-hmm. So, so now if a woman really has that in her mind, she's messing up the whole domino effect. She's trying to make the domino stand back up. No, like you don't get to do that. Uh, so monogamy is really asking a lot of a man because once a man, any man who's emotional is not a good leader. He's not a master. Most masters are not like emotional guys. They're not, they don't drink, they don't drink. They, they don't smoke, they don't, they're very like in control. Um, so they're not emotional. So right. because what happens if you have an emotional master, he could lose control. Right. Because emotional men, when they get emotional, they've lost control. They've literally lost control over themselves. They have, they don't, they vomit stuff out of their mouth that, that, that doesn't even qualify. <laughs> It doesn't even quantify to anything other than like you lost control, bro. And kills you know? confidence, right? Yeah, it just it just it throws it I mean like how could a woman respect a man who gets emotional? Who exactly. can't control can't control his his emotion that he's supposed to like he starts he starts maybe yelling, he starts breaking things, he starts putting that using his power in a way that is not productive. Mm-hmm. You know, because when a man bucks up to a woman because he's emotional, because he has to be monogamous, because the whole thing trickles down, right? Now, now you're living in this world, you're meeting girls, you go out on a business trip and you, and you have the opportunity to do this, but you have all this guilt working on you instead of just living your moment in your manhood, enjoy it. And then go, you go back home and everything's okay. You're all caught up, right? As a man, you're all caught up with all this stuff that you're supposed yeah. to do that is unnatural to you right so yeah it's, so- it's double it's double because not only have you dealt with the monogamy thing that's disproportionate from your making you also have you never addressing the relationship of who's dominant who, like that conversation don't even come up it's just like some false assumption that the man is in control when we all know that's not the case the courts don't support it the men get chopped up in this country uh, pretty bad. And um, you got two things working against you while doing the best you can to be a good husband and be a good dad and everything and how hard that is. Those two things are period, right? So in a sense, you got two full-time jobs and then two things working against you. And then, and then just simply having a conversation about that starts a whole different world because um, it's like what, what you bring in, Lexi, is – and what you brought to the conversation for a lot of people, I think, didn't ever even know that on all the panels that you've been on, all the channels you've been on, is the level of detail you can go into. Um, not just from the con, con uh, contract aspect, but just what do you like? Why do you like this? Knowing your hard limits, using some of those words, you, you um, some of those terms you brought. Um, giving people an opportunity to know stuff, uh, to explore questions, you know, explore things that it may be even started when they were children. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like this kink because of that. And then you talked about that too. You talked about how some of these kinks came from things that might have happened when they were young. You actually said a lot of these people, you know, have experienced some type of mistreatment when they were young. And 
going and talking about it may help, but they, they may need to have an experience. They may need to have one of those releases, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. this, yeah, got, yeah, go ahead. Because you got control back. Right. You, you got control back. Right. Because you're facing mm -hmm. it. Right. You're facing it and you're changing it and you're defining it. It doesn't define who you are. So everything you're saying, I agree with. You. And especially when I think it's the most disgusting thing is when I see women use their husbands as the butt of the joke in public mm -hmm. or at dinner parties or, you know, you mm -hmm. know, that they just they challenge him instead of like bigging him up. They try to one up him. Oh, honey, you know, you don't know how to make the kids lunch. You know, you know, it's like, Dad, yeah. why, 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 why are yeah. you doing that to him in public? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, um, because those kind of guys, I mean, I think that, I think that those type of men just fall into situations with women because of their upbringing. Uh, because because they have a defeatist mentality, and so they don't know their value. Right. They don't know, and, and you know they haven't been around. I guess maybe environments where they had to do for themselves, right? They've always had maybe somebody that would um, what do you call it? Like would uh, help them out, like get them out of their situation. I don't know why some men are like that. I don't know. I'm not attracted to those kind of guys, you know? I feel yeah. bad for them. I'm like, that's embarrassing, dude. Like, your husband is a whole man out here. Like, and I always say, like, honestly, when I see that, because I do see that in my world, and I'm like, damn, that's horrible. I'm deep down, like, I bet you he cheats on her. Or he has a sugar baby. Or he has something. Because there's no way that this guy could deal with that. Like, every day. He has to be doing something to get that, you know, work that out of himself because, right. because these women who, who do that to me, they, and I think some people familiar, like women that just make their husbands or their boyfriends, the butt of the joke. And they try to, you know, diminutize him. You know, like I always have to tell him to take out the garbage, big deal. So why not every guy's going to naturally know, remember to take out the garbage. What's the big deal. You could tell him if I have to tell you, if I have to tell you 50 times, it's not a big deal to me. To be like, babe, don't forget to take out the garbage. That's just fine. Like, I'm not your mom. You don't have to be like nagged to do something. Mm -hmm. I'm just like the boyfriend that I have. I have to remind them occasionally to take out the garbage four times a day. Not a big deal. Yeah. Well, she's been submissive to some other girl, some other female that will tell her, "Oh, you, you shouldn't have to talk to him that many times." Right. We don't. We don't even live in that, their house. <laughs> Not in their relationship, whether that's her mother, her aunt, her girlfriend. Right. You know, she's being uh, a battery being put in her back to disrespect her male for somebody that's not even in her relationship. But actually, they are. They in more of a relationship than the man and the woman. That's what's crazy about it. So, so it's very, um, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of men have a big confusion, you know, with the level of responsibility that it truly takes when you decide to have a contract with someone and assure her. And it, there's no, look, there's no wedding ceremony in vanilla world that gives you what I've had. <laughs> okay. I've never been married. I don't have kids, but I have had better relationships than any married woman probably in happiness and coming. I've never had, I've never had a bad breakup. I have had, I've had, had to have, uh, changes and clauses in the contract that I would not agree to. And that's why I was released. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like something I wasn't aware of, you know? So I get to have that with somebody and it doesn't require a whole big wedding ceremony necessarily for me to know when Gary, <coughs> man, is he all right? Okay. For me to have this man guarantee that I'm going to be fine. There's no, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. So I think, yes, if vanilla couples or even couples, young couples, you know, that are in love and know that they want to be together, if they take the time to define their relationship, you know, delineate the things that they expect and the things that they need, even have a mission statement, have goals within your relationship, you know, treat it a little bit like a business so that you 
aren't emotional about everything in your freaking relationship. Right. Right. <laughs> you have like control. You get to talk and talk and dialogue and be heard and agree. We don't agree. Let's test this out. It worked. Oh my God, fantastic. And you just build on that contract. And then and then that's what you acknowledge. It's down and it's on paper. So when things come up, you don't have to have a reaction like emotional, losing control, you know, uh, bring an infraction into your household that could destroy your home, which which happens. But, hi. What's, going on? What's up, Joe? How you doing? Thank you. But um, I'm going off on a rant. So do you, let's see. No, you well, well no, no, what you're talking about, I got you. Look, this is what I mean about like this dominant and submissive being the foundation to all relationships even in, in the animal world is because women are not like like the saying is you know pressure is built for shoulders not hips and when you take that dominant position in 2022 with all the financial responsibilities that come with that all the decisions that come with that all of this different social injustice and things that's happening all this news coming out you as a woman wanting to be monogamous, wanting to be the dominant one, wanting to, want, wanting to be the one that has control and they're supposed to listen to you and the children. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure and you be, you need to make sure you're built for all of that versus being in your natural place, having all of these things taken off your plate and it being put on a man that's being trained by another man that can handle all of those things. Uh, you might want to consider it. You know what I'm saying? Like this is why it's important to have these conversations because in my experience, I, I'm willing to bet a good number that about 95, 98% of the women I dealt with don't want choices. They don't want options. They want to be controlled. They want to know that I I got everything covered. They want to be able to come to me, find out what it is, and move on. Most of them will probably trust, if their life depended on it, will come to me. Right? They don't actually want all of this pressure. They want to be able to be in a a controlled environment, safe environment where they can be themselves. They don't have to worry about unnecessary crap and they can live a free life, a, a guilt-free, stress-free life. And that's that's what this offers when you have that type of relation as a foundation. Of course, nothing's going to be perfect. Shit happens. But taking a burden of a bunch of stress that you just not built for doesn't make any sense. Like it's like it's it's like trying to build a house with your baby's play school tool, tools like it's, <laughs> that's that's, good way to put it. it's no way in hell it's like that's not what that's for like you get away with a couple of things but you can't build it yourself you're not built to build society when you say you're a man and you're in a dominant position you you responsible for safety you know what i'm saying it's a big responsibility to be the dominant one y'all get caught up in the tax uh aspect of head of household but you're the dominant one you if you can control everybody everybody's going off your decisions and you watch i watch women constantly go I need a break. You can't, you don't have no choice to be a break when you're dominant. Right. Yes, not. You don't have that choice. You need no, to keep that. No break. There's I no need a break. break. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to run the world. Yeah. It's a lot of work to run the world. And if, and if, if you do the work and you built your world and it belongs mm -hmm. to you, every component in there, and then you have to run it you know, and, and that takes work. And so, um, a lot of times women can get in the way of that for dumb reasons, you know, for just dumb reasons. Like I don't, I'm, I, I see this in, in relationships around me. I'm like, and I tell my girlfriend, so I'm like, girl, just leave him alone. Leave him alone, girl. What do you need? Let's go to yoga. Call me. And I, and I even apologize for her. I'll be like, I'm sorry, because I have girlfriends that I've known since I was very young, and they drive their husbands crazy. And in the beginning of their relationships, of course, I'm an advocate for my girl. But after mm -hmm. 10, 15 years, 20 years of watching them together, I'm on the side of the husbands now. You know, I'm like, dude, yo, it hasn't been easy being your friend for 20 years. So I could imagine as a wife, like, you can't be like that. I, you know... I hold my girls accountable. You know, I, I am, I don't, I am very no joke when I hold people accountable. I come in very strong and I, and I preface it and I, and I send you flowers before we go have the conversation. 
because I cannot accept bad behavior from women around me. Um, and at the same level, I, I expect them to call me out. They don't have right. to call me out. They don't have to call me out that often, but I I do have to get called out occasionally because I could be a little bougie. <laughs> I could be like, listen, what the hell's going on? Where's the strawberries at for the ship? You know, I could be a little Dang. bit like that. But that's because I'm spoiled. I've had great masters. I've ne- I've I've lived. In that space bang, you're describing, bang, very bang, 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 bang. I've lived in. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got lost in a train of thought. I just saw that goodness I just heard. Washed. They would be fools to resist my divine power. Yes, yes, was a necessary law. Soon I will have you. One for younger and more powerful. Remember that. When a king is loved as I am, much can be accomplished. Be with the world class.